Good afternoon, my name is Jim Saywell from Bureau Happold. I'm a director in the Manchester office and I'm a leader in the UK Sustainability and Physics team. I'm an MEP engineer who focuses on building performance, but I work in a team with experts in all areas of sustainability. So today I'm going to step outside my comfort zone a little and talk about sustainability in its wider context and how I believe we should be thinking about sustainability in stadium design. I don't think it would be an exaggeration to say that it's been difficult this year for the sports sector. Um, we've seen sport affected at every level, from my son's Saturday morning football matches being cancelled to the Olympics being postponed to next year. Uh, we're still watching elite sports on television with no crowds, um, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. As it was recently announced that crowds will soon return to stadia, except for those of us who are in tier three. And in the last couple of weeks, we have even better news on a few fronts. Uh, on the imminent release of the COVID-19 vaccines. While this is great news and it bodes well for a better 2021, there's no imminent miracle vaccine to cure the climate and biodiversity crisis. Um, and it's clear that the poor are disproportionately impacted or at least most immediately affected by all of these crises. Um, for the last several decades, we've been rapidly accelerating our consumption which is having a devastating effect on the natural environment that we rely on. Um, and we urgently need to work together to, to reverse this process. Um, now the reach of sport is vast and recent trends suggest athletes and organizations want to make a positive impact on, the, on society beyond what they do on the field. Um, this influence isn't limited to teams and athletes. Um, stadiums themselves have the potential to to inspire fans to behave differently, um, having a positive impact well beyond the limits of what happens on match day. As society changes and athletes become more involved in communities, we can expect fans to demand more from their team to contribute towards improving socio-economic issues and environmental issues. As organisations start to do more to reduce waste and save energy and water, um, we will become more aware of how our teams compare with others and um, we can expect with increased awareness from fans that they'll demand more from their stadium um, and wanted to see it outperform their competitors. Um, Bureau Happold contributed to the Brand Finance 2020 football report um, it, by um, carrying out the venue performance rating and this rating is based largely around three things, the experience, revenue and impact ratings. Um, and I think one thing we want to try and introduce um, in the near future is sustainability into this rating system. Now, for a long time, we've largely been paying lip service to sustainability. And I don't think it'd be unfair to say that on many projects, some of us take advantage of the lack of clear definition of what sustainability is or means uh, to tick boxes required by local planning authorities um, and do it as cheaply as possible. So many projects that are sold as being sustainable buildings do so by spinning a story that essentially emphasises elements of design that are at best modest improvements over standard practice. Um, when we do talk about sustainability we might think about the climate and biodiversity crisis or perhaps addressing social inequality um, but economics is often excluded from the discussion, um, leading to a perceived choice between value for money and sustainability. Uh, this fallacy um, leads to many decisions ba uh, based on short term economics. Um, and economics is an important aspect of sustainability in itself, and it's inherently linked and dependent on the other aspects of sustainability. You know, as stadium designers, we have the ability to, and, and the responsibility to, to, to drive better social, environmental, economic outcomes. Um, so continuing with an inc incremental approach, making minor tweaks and improvements over what we did in the last project, it, it just isn't going to cut it. Um, we're not going to get to where we need to be. We need to make change, um, we need to change the way we think about sustainability. We need to stop thinking about economics as a separate issue to social issues and environmental issues. And we need to start thinking about all three as being completely integrated and interdependent. Um, so this, this gets me to the five capitals model, uh, the main topic of, of my presentation. 
And um, this was developed by the Forum for the Future, and it provides a basis of understanding sustainability in terms of um, economic um, concept of wealth creation. It's built around uh, the recognised notion that sustainable development meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Um, so I'm just going to define the, the five capitals and see if I can put some context into what they all mean. So I'm going to start with natural capital. I mean, it, this includes all forms of resources in the environment. So it's minerals, water, air, it's sunlight, it's plants, it's animals, it's, it's all those things. So all other forms of capital are ultimately derived from natural capital. Uh, natural capital is, isn't really accounted for at all when we're making most financial decisions, which is crazy because it, um, when you think about it, because natural capital represents our only real source of tangible assets. So um, by making financially focused decisions without considering natural capital, we inevitably end up making um, money by by drawing down on those on those assets. Um, so we can't continue to carry on drawing down on natural capital reserves at the rate they can't be replenished um, without adversely affecting the other forms of capital. So, so in other words, business as usual is compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs, um, which is by definition unsustainable. Um, and this is gonna adversely impact socio-economic well-being of people in the future. Now, a pragmatic approach to enhancing natural capital on the project, we, we, we accept that there's inevitably going to be some damage caused to the local ecology, but we, we should focus on um, having a net positive impact overall, so uh, in, the local, in the local environment. So with stadium designers, we can help our clients understand what damage will take place how we can minimize it and how we can help them enhance natural capital in the local natural capital in the local area um, with the aim of, uh, of a net improvement uh, overall natural capital. Now uh, social capital is about economics having shared norms, uh, values and understandings that facilitate cooperation um, within or among groups, enabling people to work together. Improving social capital strongly correlates with a sustainable economy and, um, and socio-economic well-being of a team's supporters will directly affect the future financial stability of the sports team itself. Um, so doing what we can to help build social capital is, is, where, is in the interests of our clients. Um, so how can stadium de designers help enhance social capital? Um, well, at Stadia are, I think it would be fair to say, one of the most underutilized building types we have. Um, and I think a, a lot of opportunities lie in designing Stadia to have uh, use beyond big events, so beyond match day, um, creating potential for social interaction. So this would lie in the programming of the building and maybe creating space that can that can spark chance encounters and encourage communication and interaction. Um, uh, human capital is is more about the individual, so it's the um, it's the value of the abilities and qualities of labour that influence productivity, such as education, technical skills, and things like that. So um, investing in these qualities produces greater economic output through increased productivity. Now, uh, human capital um, recognises the intangible assets and, and qualities that improve worker performance and benefit the economy. Um, so as with social capital, it's in the interest of any sports team to want to enhance human capital. Um, the future financial health of any team is dependent on the socio-economic well-being of its fan base. So um, focusing on job recreation in the local area is one way to enhance human capital. Um, that's training people, teaching local people new skills, and of course providing um, local people with employment. Um, now manufactured capital, it comprises of material goods or fixed assets which contribute to the production process rather than being the output itself is, is the formal definition. And um, so basically the stadium itself represents manufactured capital as well as other buildings. Um, a lot of focus on a good stadium design is reducing structure 
um, and primarily that's because it saves money and also happens to reduce embodied energy. Um, and with net zero power on the agenda, there's been a recent surge of interest for reducing embodied energy. Um, and, but is minimizing embodied energy always the right option? Um, perhaps. But as I mentioned, of social capital, stay you're probably amongst the most underutilized buildings we have. And another way to enhance manufacturing capital would be to make the building as flexible as possible so it could be used for other purposes. Um, and this might might mean getting more use out of the building that could justify a higher embodied energy uh, if that was what was required to achieve it. Um, financial capital, this is uh, this is the capital that covers assets in um, the form of currency, so it's it's basically money. Um, if if businesses if our business isn't making money, even if the other capitals are well managed, then it, it's just not sustainable. Um, if, if we consider this further, it can cover many issues such as fair wealth distribution, um, creating wealth in local communities and, and um, in which the business operates, and um, considering other capitals when determining the financial position of the organisation. Um, so any organisation will use all five capitals to deliver its products and services. A sustainable organisation will maintain and where possible enhance these stocks of capital assets rather than deplete them and degrade them. So as stadium designers, we need to help our clients understand what sustainability means for them by advising them for the potential impact of their decisions. Um, so an integrated and balanced approach is what's required. Um, and this in itself requires us to do, define what sustainability means, sustainability means in such a way it provides clarity and direction for the project. Um, there are, of course, existing sustainability rating systems that have helped, um, had a great impact and provided with a lot of guidance uh, for building projects over the years. But in my opinion, none are particularly well suited to Stadia. Um, there are, of course, advantages in using existing formal rating systems in terms of marketing, benchmarking performance, um, Getting the, getting the badge at the end, but, but the costs of certification can be quite significant, so it's definitely not right for every project. Um, and our bespoke sustainability framework pushes us to think about what's important for the project, enabling us to develop hierarchies and find the right balances to squeeze as much out of the financial capital we have um, to maximise the, the other forms of capital. Um, so using a bespoke sustainability framework, we can draw on the best and most relevant parts of existing framework methodologies. And, and this is something we've done on, on several projects where we've used uh, various rating systems and um, the best parts of each to develop a bespoke framework. Um, now, now creating a bespoke framework provides a platform uh, for us to get buy-in throughout an organization. And so the creation of the framework itself, um, can, uh, um, the actual process of creation itself can be used to create a, a unique vision statement. And buy-in is absolutely critical for adopting more sustainable practices as, as human behaviour is the single biggest influence you can have on sustainability. Um, situations can change in the project, so flexibility is also important. A, um, standard sustainability rating system tends to be fairly rigid, whereas if you go through a bespoke approach to sustainability, you can adapt to change, you know, changes in um, the, the economy, leadership, um, social trends, um, environmental issues, technical, technological needs, things like that. Um, and tracking the origins of, of why decisions were made is, an, is another benefit. So um, on a few of our early attempts of using a bespoke framework, the, the early stories were lost and then a change in management halfway through the project um, meant that we, we didn't know why some of those decisions were made and it, it, it just led to a lack of clarity. Um, so I think using the sustainability framework to, to track when and why decisions were made is, is, is a great thing that, that, that we can do. Now, uh, Another thing about bespoke frameworks is that they should be referenced and they should be science-based and, and they should be outcome-driven. Um, we need 
need feedback what what we've learned you know, from the process so we continually improve and we can implement them more effectively on future projects so um and what you see on this slide is is um is a web-based tool we use for national collections facility in, in edinburgh just reporting back on the progress of of um of the process as we went along successfully applied this process on many projects um such as a few of which you see here the, the by expo um, david attenborough building and uh, the university of cambridge um newcastle urban sciences building uh selfridges the national the national history museum and amala in uh, saudi arabia and, and though we don't have a lot of time to go through a case study for this short presentation I thought I'd just throw a few highlights of the um, process we went through for the 2018 Building Performance Awards winner, the, the David Attenborough Building. Now, uh, the one of the first things we do is a series of workshops which is engages the, the, the key stakeholders. And this is what gets the buy-in that we, we really, really need. And, and it, it's a kind of an iterative process at first to, to kind of educate, learn, um, share knowledge and, and then just determine what's most important for the project. And this, this diagram just illustrates a, almost it, it was actually sticky notes on, on a poster, but um, this is the, the, the cleaned up digital um, summary of, of which aspects of the design, which strategies they found most important and which would have most influence on the design. And, and then we, we use simple, simple charts to kind of summarize um, what the responses were uh, and, and use that to kind of feed back into the process. And then at the, at the one of the products, I suppose, or it's, a, it's, a, I say it's not a really a product, it's, it, it's continually changed, but um, it's grouping the, uh, the strategies uh, according to specific themes and then developing um, targets against the strategies. So uh, some targets, the, these um, dots and circles in the middle um, represent uh, targets, some of which are mandatory, some of which are aimed, some of which um, will, will be applied in, in post-occupancy. Um, we also applied a similar process in the, 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 19, the 2019 um, Building Performance Awards winner, the Newcastle Urban Sciences Building. Um, and so why didn't I use a sports project? We, we, we have tried to apply that on a couple of sports projects and we are currently in the process of applying it on, uh, on Everton. Um, now this, this, this project's been going on for a couple of years now, but it's still going to be a few years before it's up and running and ready to report on. But we, we did the same, the same process. We, we, we communicated with the club, with the key stakeholders to develop what's important for the club and what sustainability meant for them. And we've used that to develop specific targets based around existing rating systems and we're going to be tracking that throughout the, uh, the construction phase and the post-occupancy phase and we're going to use that to feed back. So um, as a performance focus engineer I usually like to finish my presentation with some clear actionable advice and I'm worried I've delivered a presentation that doesn't really provide any specific answers so um, here goes my attempt at satisfying the engineering me by providing a closing summary. Um, <clears throat> so sustainable development is not a destination, it's a process of change and change is difficult. It requires us to think more uh, and it requires us to stretch ourselves and our clients. Stadium designers can make a difference. Um, you know, we're, we're in a position probably more than other sectors to influence our clients on, on how they think and how, how they can affect uh, the environment and society. Um, and another point is we need to we need to squeeze uh, as much social and human capital uh, out of our uh, out of we, as we can out of our budget. Now, um, economics uh, needs to be completely integrated into social uh, into sustainability and drawing down on the environmental, social, and human capital in order for us to make money makes no financial sense. It, it's financially unsustainable. And as our ultimate source of the money uh, will eventually run out, I need to go back and do this again. As a performance focused engineer, I, I usually like to finish off my presentations with some clear, actionable advice. And I'm worried that I've 
um, delivered a presentation that doesn't really provide any answers. So here goes at my attempt at satisfying the engineering in me by um, providing a closing summary. Um, so sustainable development is not a destination, it's, it's a process of change and change is difficult. It, it requires us to think more and stretch ourselves and our clients. Um, but stadium designers can make a difference. We're in a position probably more than any other sector to influence how our clients think about the effect they can have, good or bad, on, on the environment and society. Um, we need to squeeze as much social and human capital as we can out of each budget. Um, so, and, and economics, it needs to be completely integrated into sustainability. Drawing down on environmental, social and human capital in order to make money actually makes no financial sense. It, it's financially unsustainable. You know, as, as our ultimate source of the money will eventually run out. Um, equally, money isn't unlimited and, and we, we can only work within the money we have. Um, we need to stretch the money on every project to have a maximum impact. And real outcome focused sustainability needs to be a big part of how we measure this impact. Um, a bespoke sustainability framework provides clarity uh, and helps stakeholders understand why we're doing what we're doing. Um, what we're doing and, and when we're doing it. And if done right, we can set it up to provide feedback for the next project, facilitating that continuous improvement uh, that real sustainability is all about. And we need to focus on outcomes, we need to focus on um, what we're doing and create a feedback loop for continuous improvement. Um, and that's all I have, so thank you for your time.